The Kennedy family has fascinated America for several generations, as evidenced by this compilation of two episodes of The Rick Gilmore Show, one from July 17th, 1999, and the following Saturday night, July 24th, 1999. On the 17th, JFK Jr.'s plane was reported missing, and by the time of the 24th broadcast, he, he'd been declared dead and, and people were dissecting the situation. Kim Mahalik fills in on the first episode for Rick Gilmore, who had done a national broadcast earlier in the day. So she does a great job on the 17th, on the day of the plane crash and the search. And she also handles disrespectful callers quite well. And some of it's aimed at her and Rick Gilmore's absence and some at the Kennedys and and Gilly fields a few calls like that as well. But there's some good, interesting dialogue about the Kennedys and, and our fascination with them. So enjoy this from the WTAM archives, thanks to Board Op Dan, July 17th, 1999, July 24th, 1999. Who killed the Kennedys? <laughs> After all, it was you and me. Well, the CIA, some people say, <laughs> and all kinds of people, the mob, I mean, stick it where it don't belong and boom, boom, boom. Uh, WTAM 1100, you're on the air. I'm glad you're on the air. This is uh, Mark from Middleburg Heights. How you doing? And I'm glad that uh, homeless fell like jerks off the air, and I'd like to see you put the uh, microphone in your love hole. Okay, that was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a Saturday night, isn't it? Good evening. You're on WTAM 1100. Yeah, was Gilly on that flight? He's MIA, or what, what was the deal with that? Pardon me? Is Gilly on that flight with JFK? I mean, where is he at tonight, do you know? I haven't really been listening that long. So. Oh, Gilly? Well, yeah. see, he's been he's been working hard all day long, so the powers... Oh, he did an afternoon show. Yeah, yeah. yeah so he... Now, what you're trying to say is we're supposed to care about this pompous, rich guy who got all his money from his father who uh, ran illegal booze and walked on everybody and destroyed people's lives on the way up. And we're, you know, and Ethel Kennedy or whatever, Rose Kennedy, we're supposed to feel sorry for these people who have clean, people that cook for them, clean for them, wipe their butts. I mean, come on. I mean, the guy flew a plane. He didn't know what he was doing. He, he spent the money on a state-of-the-art plane, had no idea to fly it. He killed himself. Why should we feel sorry about that? Well, I'm not saying that you should. I'm, I'm, ask, I'm asking if you do, and apparently you do not. Oh, but you bring, up, you bring up a great point, though, is that John F. Kennedy Jr. received his pilot's license about a, a year and two months ago, and he couldn't even uh, operate the plane with the controls. He had to do it visually. Well, and they said he never flew at night either. No. Right. Isn't that the truth? Right. And, and once he got up there, the haze was supposedly so thick that when you're trying to operate a plane through that kind of thick haze and all of your references are through the visual aspect, that it becomes, you completely, you become completely disoriented. Well, the way they said the thing dove from 22,000 or 2,200 feet to 1,300 feet in like, a, what was it, 45 feet a second or something, I... There's something, something must have happened, like the engine must have cut out, because I, I don't care how much haze is there, if the engine's running, the guy's on an uh, even path, he's looking at the controls, and he's got, he's got the land thing, you know, to tell them basically how level he's flying, mm -hmm. uh, it must have been something else that made it dive, I mean, I don't know how the guy could just panic and then go into a dive. I don't really see how that's possible. Well, the, the way that I heard it explained today on television basically was that Kennedy was not instrument rated. In other words, he was not able to yeah. use his instruments. He became, he, it's very easy to become disoriented and lose control. Now, he also supposedly had an injury to his left ankle. He had, well, that doesn't matter. Well, I, the way it is, is, what it is, he's a pompous rich guy who thought he could do anything. He figured it was dark. He figured, well, hell, I've been a pilot for a year and a half. I got my own state-of-the-art plane. cost me thousands of thousands of dollars. I'll just go up and uh, I'll be able to make it. And obviously he was dead wrong because he's dead now and he killed his wife and her sister. Well, and, and again, <laughs> I have to say that we don't know that yet. That's the assumption right now. But do you think that maybe the point of view that this family is coming from, that there was an indestructibility 
that, that, that well, went through the head of these people, and maybe that's why all these things happened to them? Uh, well, I just, think, I just think people who are filthy rich like that who walk on other people's backs, I mean, it's karma. It's going to come back to haunt you. I mean, JFK, they said he was a nice guy. They said he was a, he was a great lawyer. The guy it took him like ten times to pass the bar exam. I mean, how good of a lawyer could he have been? But, uh, you know, this is what happens. I mean, uh, the one Kennedy got away with something, maybe this is payback. You know? And that, thanks for the phone call. That that's a very popular viewpoint at, at this point because Joseph P. Kennedy Sr. was known to be, well, shall I say, less than a Hallmark card in the making. He was not a very nice man in terms of uh, his activities, uh, both above and beyond board, if you know what I mean. And also the the uh, JFK himself was known to be quite the, uh, well, he would run around, let's put it that way, according, if you believe the things that you read. JFK was less than faithful to his wife, and, and, and he knew that uh, his wildcatting ways would have to stop, although he found it difficult to control that once he got into office. Now, believe it or not, from everything that we know in this tabloid society of John F. Kennedy Jr., they say that he was able to le lead a relatively scandal-free life. Uh, whether or not we should be speculating on that at this point is inconsequential, I suppose, to the argument of the last gentleman. Let's go back to the phones. WTIM 1100. Uh, okay, we are having so much fun, aren't we? <laughs> Greg and his car, you're on the air. Hey, Rick, how you doing? Tonight? All right. I hope that this uh, Kennedy thing kind of passes over pretty quick, and it's really tragic, but I, I think now that they... I heard earlier tonight that they've got actual recording of the con cockpit conversation... I guess he had the recording device in there that uh, that records the cockpit conversation and not uh, only the conversation he has between the control tower. Um, oh, I, I really I was under the impression that, that they did not have a uh, voice recorder, or at least it wasn't uh, mandatory. Well, no, it wasn't mandatory, but he did have it as uh, I guess he put it in as an option on his uh, plane there, and they they released a little bit of uh, conversations I heard earlier on CNN or MSNBC, whatever the hell that is. Right. And, um, I mean, it's, it's just going to create a lot more problems because part of the conversation that they released I heard earlier tonight was, I guess, as his sister-in-law was getting into the plane, she had, I mean, he had asked her, he said, hey, don't you want to take a shower before we leave? And she said, no, I'll just wash up on the beach. Oh, my God, sir, your history. It led me down the garden path. Can't believe it. Tony and Solon, you're on the air. Hey, Rick, how you doing? Okay, yeah. Hey, I got a comment about this Kennedy flag waving, or not the flag waving, the saluting the casket. Yeah. But I just heard you make a comment about this uh, guy at the religious bookstore selling uh, guns. Yeah. I had a guy working for me last year. I had to, f I had to fire for stealing from me, and uh, his wife called me up and said that her lord or their lord doesn't expect them to be perfect. But uh, well, I, but but their lord doesn't pay the paychecks. And I asked her. I said, take a look at whose who's name's on the check. But uh, this, the story I heard, and I guess none of us can really determine what really took place with that uh, saluting, but the story I heard about that is that I guess John Jr. Had, had, had some curiosity as to why everybody was saluting his father. And as a president back then, there was a lot, the respect was different than it is today. And, uh, and he wanted to show the same respect to his father, and, uh, and that's how that came about. But uh, on another note here, I... I I guess this John Kennedy Jr. has a, um, a housekeeper uh, up here in New York for their house, and yeah. and, and he was on the uh, I don't know, one of the shows here today. Um, John Kennedy, he was talking about what happened before they left, and the housekeeper said that uh, he asked John Kennedy if there's anything that he needed to be done while he was gone on his trip, and John Kennedy said, well, you just feed the dog, we'll feed the fish. Dan and Lindhurst, hello. Uh, yeah, you know, Kennedy, this salute, you know, they're making a big deal about it. Yeah. He probably saluted him with a crap in his diaper, too. I mean, he was only oh, three. Oh, sir. Bob and Garfield, you're next. Hi, how you doing? Good, you? Uh, I want to, real good, I, I want to talk about uh, Mike White, but first, uh, I think it would have been uh, pretty funny if that Secret Service agent had uh, taught John John how to give a salute. Well, I don't, <laughs> I don't think he'd be a, an employed Secret Service agent after that. He'd probably lose his job. No, but he'd be a legend. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> imagine. Practical <laughs> jokers. <laughs> oh, those Secret Service boys, as bad as the Kennedys. Touch football, always mixing it up. Thanks for watching Cleveland Live Music. If you like what you saw, please hit the subscribe button. And there's further subscription options listed below. Fred's Boots. 
I believe Fred to have been COVID patient number one in Ohio. Died very early before they were calling it COVID. R.I.P. Fred.